here with Tanya Byrne, who's author of Heart Shaped Bruise and Follow Me Down, and we've got some questions to ask today. Um, did your writing process vary when writing Heart Shaped Bruise compared to your latest novel, Follow Me Down? It did because obviously Heart Shaped Bruise was my first book, so I wrote that completely on my own, and I didn't have an editor and an agent and all of those lovely people that look after me now. So it was a very different process. Um, and it was really hard as well because Heart Shaped Bruise was. Um, it was very hard. It was like a tricky second album. So Heart Shaped Bruise had done really well. And I was concerned about the second album, whether people would like it. So it was quite stressful and painful at times, but really enjoyable. Um, is there another author that you envy the writing style of? Like everyone. <laughs> I think, I'm, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Nabokov, I think he writes beautifully, and I love John Updike, um, Ian McEwan, and Hunter S. Thompson, and Jack Kerouac, and just my influences vary. I mean, Hilary Mantel is incredible, so just it just varies, although you've got someone like Maureen Johnson who's got a great sense of humour, so, and then someone like Philip Pullman and Patrick Ness who've got crazy imaginations, just I wish I had their imaginations. So everyone, really. <laughs> Um, can you describe the latest book in five words? Uh, Follow me down? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, okay, five words. Um, this is really difficult. <laughs> uh, I, I suppose it's like what happened to best friends, I suppose, is basically what happens. It's, it's a story about two best friends that have fallen, fallen out. Um, apart from a writer, what other career would you like to have? I don't know, someone asked me this today at school, and I could never do it because I'm not qualified, but I've always wanted to be like a criminal profiler. I'm a bit obsessed with criminal minds. So I did a law degree, and I was never really interested in the law bit. I was always more interested in why they'd done, the, or committed the murder or whatever. So the criminal profiler or a psychiatrist, I think. Um... Do you have any tips for aspiring authors? Uh, yeah, read, read, and then read some more, and then read even more. And if you really like the book, read it again. I think there's a lot of kind of snobbery about what sort of books you should read. And if there's a book that you really do enjoy, there's a reason why you enjoy it. So as a writer, go back and read it as a writer and find out what it is about the book. Is it the characters? Is it the pacing? Is it the, the short chapters? Whatever it is that's <coughs> your imagination. Um, and then I think you've got to be a reader to be a writer. And then just be honest. I know that's the, the oldest kind of piece of advice out there, but it's so true. Like, if I thought about Heart Shaped Bruce for a minute, I would never have written it because it's so, compared to like YA writers like John Green or um, Maureen Johnson or whoever, it's so different. It's so English. I don't think anyone would want it. And I'd be wrong. So. <laughs> yes, you get my <laughs> Um What's your opinion on like whether like YA writing is too dark? Some people kind of say it is. So, what would you say to them? Not at all. I think life is dark. I think life for teenagers is difficult. And why should we pretend that it isn't? And if these books help a teenager get through a problem, then surely that's a good thing. And I don't think any writer out there, even me, with my first book, is glamorising anything that happens in our books. So. I think if one person, like I, I had a conversation with someone about um, Speak by Laurie Hulse and Benison. If one person, one teenage girl, teenage boy reads that and has the courage to speak up about being raped, they have them at their birthday. Uh, I'm writing another book. Well, I've got another two books actually. Um, so my next book is due next month. Deadline looming, <laughs> and that hopefully will be out next October. And sleeping, hopefully. It's been a very long day. <laughs> uh, if you could change the ending of any book, what would it be, and how would you change it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the first book that immediately comes to mind is his Dark Materials. <laughs> Have you read that? You see, it's hard. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a thing that happens at the end that kind of keeps two characters apart. And I completely understand that it needed to happen. It broke my heart that it did. So 
for selfish, purely selfish reasons, not creative reasons in the slightest. It would not make the book better. I would change the ending. Oh, superlative. That's a ten dollar word. What is a harmless character? There are no easy characters. Because even the smallest character who's only in it for a little bit, you've got actually it's harder. You, every character is in a book for a reason, and they're not there for a reason, they, they've got to come out. So even if someone's only in it, in it for like half the book or four of the book. They still have to earn their place in the book. So there are no easy characters, I don't think. Um, the hard character for me to write was a drama, I think, because I'm not Nigerian. And um, I've never lived away from home, and I've never been to boarding school, I've never lived in America. There were so many things that happened to a drama that I've never been through. Whereas I think with Emily, I kind of understood. She was a London girl, and she, I kind of understood her a little bit better. Whereas Adam was this beautiful mystery to me. Um, but that was the joy of writing her, was really getting to know her, and hopefully translating that onto the page so you get to know her as well. Um, what is the most exciting and least exciting thing about being um, The most exciting thing, I think, is obviously doing stuff like this and meeting people who read the books, which is incredible. Um, I also love that daydreaming is now part of my job. I can <laughs> sit and stare out of the window and that's actually research, which is good. Um, the hard part of this job is it's, it's, a, it's beautiful and it's joyous when you can write, but when you can't, for whatever reason, it's not working, a scene's not working, a character's not working. With, with Heartshake Brewers, I originally started writing that from Juliet's point of view. And I wrote that whole book from Juliet's point of view. Um, and then started again from Emily's point of view, because I realised that Emily's point of view was more interesting. And that was really hard, having to dump 85 pounds, like basically an entire novel, just throw it away. But, Heartshake Brewers is a better book because of it. If I'd persisted with Juliet's point of view, because I'd already done it. I don't know if it would have been published. Um, what is the most interesting place that you've ever been that inspired your writing? Hmm. Uh, I went to Morocco last year, and that was incredible in the sense that it was such a culture shock. Like, I knew that it was just like this. I was a little bit overwhelmed when I, actually, when I first got there. Because it's heat. I was thinking at one point it was 42 degrees. It's colour and smell and like, this, this language that you don't quite understand. And because I've travelled a lot around America, and you kind of, everyone still speaks English. So, and then the closeness of people, like, you know, you're trying to get anywhere and you're having to push through the suits and it's that kind of claustrophobia. And I think that really helped with writing Follow Me Down, actually, because. Um, Africa is like that, that's what Africa's like, it's hot and it's sweaty and dusty and, and um, cluttered and very different. So to try and understand how Adama would have felt moving to New York and then from New York on to, on to London. Uh, well, she didn't even end up in London, she ended up in Wiltshire and places. So to be able to compare the leafiness and the greenness of Wiltshire to what she would have had in Lagos, I think really helped. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah. if in like a 500 years in the future and someone sort of found your book, what do you think they sort of think of life today? Oh, that's a question. Um, I'd like them to think that teenagers are a lot smarter and braver and mature <laughs> than people who can credit for and that they are, that they can survive any uh, as long as they have each other. And I'd like, I'd like, I'd like that. I'd like people, especially girls, that they can take care of themselves. Really. And they're as brave and as fearless and as restless and as beautiful as the boys. And they have interesting stories to tell. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed the Tiny Burn event. Um, I think it was the best I've seen so far at the festival, and it was really.
really interesting to hear about the way she writes and I'm probably going to take that um, advice and put it back into my own writing. She said about writer's block that if you get writer's block the only way to get through it is just get back on the books, <coughs> just write through it even if it's like something you wouldn't normally write like poetry or short stories or anything like that just, just to get you back into the swing of writing and that's like the best advice. I really liked like listening to her say like her thoughts on like teenagers and teenage writing I thought it was really interesting and I thought it was really cool that she has like those are like, their opinions, I thought it was really good. I agree with her. Because <laughs> she said that teens can change the world. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I thought it was interesting how she wrote um, Follow Me Down in the before and after and how she wrote the before and then the after bits and then split them up and put them together because it's not something that I would necessarily think of. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that she kind of didn't really write up until like, well, like, not that long ago, like her, it was quite interesting to hear about her background um, and also because like, I mean I'm still quite young but I like love writing now so it was quite interesting to hear that she um, didn't always, that wasn't like her main aim when she was younger so it was interesting to see how she's so good and that's like become a really good author from not always being like, like wanting and being involved in things. I think it was just really nice to hear from the person behind the book because sometimes you can play out that authors are real people too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's really cool. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> it's even more exciting than being in the same room as Tom and Dougie from McFly. In fact, it was more exciting. It was definitely more exciting. <laughs> I didn't have to queue. And I didn't have to queue. I know. <laughs> and she helped me, which, yeah, <laughs> wins hands down. Hug from Tiny Bay. <laughs>